All right. Now that I have a little bit of a pause here, let me, let me fix this lighting problem. What the hell is going on? What happens if I do this? Oh, now I'm telling a spooky story. Okay, that's necessary. The main issue is that there's too much light coming from my screen. Maybe I just take the L on that being in the background. Because it seems to make me less white. I think I take the L. I think I take the L. On the sheen in the background. Ah, whatever. Is this higher quality or lower quality? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I put my phone on top of the camera. This is ridiculous. Ain't no way this is the solution. But I need to let a little bit more light in. Ain't no... Sure. My phone is currently on top of my Elgato face cam. You at home watching right now, my phone is resting on top of the camera. Because the light in the background is too bright. But the light everywhere else is not bright enough. So in order to not look like a ghost, but also not be streaming in 100 pixel quality, I have created a blinder on top of my camera by placing my phone on. Actually, I can show you. Here, give me a minute. Never mind, it's not working at all. Okay, cool. All right, whatever. Anyways, it's TikTok time, everybody. Woohoo, TikToks. I can't get the freaking lighting figured out. <laughs> I am having a frustrating day. I am making YouTube exclusive videos today because I could not stream because the internet is not functioning properly. And now the lighting in this house is impossible because there's two windows there and there's two windows there and there's a window behind me and the lights above me are strobe lights for a freaking concert. <sighs> Anyways, let's look at some TikToks. I'm so white. Can't believe I caught that on camera. Okay, it's a 20 second video where she started the camera at the beginning of the video. Meaning in the first 20 seconds of setting up the camera and recording, something happened, which caused her to say that she can't believe she... I dropped my phone. Which caused her to believe that she... To say that she can't believe she caught it on camera. I'm going to go ahead and say she can believe it because she literally set up the recording. Goldfish in a bowl, going into presumably a tray while the ugly bowl is cleaned. I, I don't, I'm going to err on the side of being kind and just say that was a little bit of an overreaction, a little bit, you know, not going to judge the human being, but I think you can believe you caught it on camera because you recorded it and maybe you need to get one of those like $4 aquarium nets to transfer your fish from tank to tank. So you're not chasing it around with your hands, dropping it onto the floor. And then by the way, throwing it into a metal, an aluminum baking pin, tin, what, what, what is that about? <laughs> My uncle sent me this video as boss fishing, I'm dead. <laughs> I gotta do that. Oh my god, I go on fishing trips with, uh... I go on fishing trips with people who actually use, like, hook and rod. Problem is, they're usually micro-fishing, so they're not really feeling. They're more like watching the water to see if something bites it, and then they'll, they'll set the hook. But... If I do go fishing with someone who's fishing for something big, it would be very funny. Homie thought he was going to catch the biggest bass of his life. This man has become friends with a fish in a Wisconsin lake, and they meet up often to catch up and hang out. Scuba diver Rex Calubra met his friend Elvis, a smallmouth bass, during a freshwater dive in 2021. And since oh my then, God, the friendship I do has... this. It was a bluegill for me, though. I dove in the reservoir near me when I was a teenager. And this bluegill would get increasingly closer to me every time that I would go there and swim. And so when I was like looking around for stuff one time, I noticed I would lift a rock and the bluegill would come over and eat whatever was under it. So I thought, hmm, maybe I should do that more often. And I would go around underwater in the reservoir and swim and lift a rock, holds it up to the bluegill and he would eat the stuff off of it. And then I would hold, pick up a rock, give it to the bluegill and he would eat the stuff off of it. They've become friends. That was my friend, the bluegill. Oh, he's probably dead now. I was going to say I should visit him, but that was like five years ago, so he's probably not around anymore. 
friendship has blossomed so much that Rex even manages a TikTok for Elvis. During that first dive in 2021, Rex noticed that Elvis was sticking closer to him than most, displaying an unusual lack of fear. A couple weeks later, Rex returned to the lake and Elvis <laughs> swam right up to him. That's such a fire selfie. Oh my God, I want that selfie. Imagine putting this on a dating profile. Most guys are like holding up their pics of the fish and you're cuddling with your fish. Freedom. Rex fed him some crawfish and says that now Elvis is completely obsessed with him. Elvis is recognizable not only by his uniquely friendly behavior, but also by a scar on his face, most likely from a catch and release encounter with a fisherman. During his second dive- Oh my dive God, isn't that so sad? This dude has been friends with this fish for two years, goes swimming with it every day. Someone's gonna like, pull it out of the water fishing, throw it on the bank, and then not put it back in the water. And this guy's friend's gone. This entire human fish interaction, just because some fuck decided to reel it out and then not put it back in, as people often do. With his fish friend, Rex taught Elvis a special call, which he says is something like a gulping grunt. And now when he hears the grunt, Elvis swims up and tags along for each dive. For a total of 13 dives together over the past two years. And Elvis is even a little bit protective of his friend, warding off other fish if they get too close to Rex, acting as a little underwater personal security guard. And That's because he views him as a food source. He says, ain't you come near my fucking food source, that is all mine. And Rex keeps the exact location of Elvis's lake a secret, aiming to safeguard his friend from eager fishermen. And while Elvis continues True. to thrive, Rex continues to visit him and document their friendship on social media for all of us to enjoy. Very cute. Yeah, I should go back and make friends with another sunfish at the reservoir and then take a selfie like that. I want a selfie like that. That's so sick. Turn the camera towards me and be like, eh, hey, me and a fish, bing chillin'. Okay, maybe if that's a real arapaima, don't touch the water. What do you think is gonna... What did you think was gonna happen? Also, what is this intro? Meme movie. And there's the ocean in the background they put... I I don't know. I, I, it's not worth thinking about, man. Spit me some wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Spit me some wisdom. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Catfish croaks are so funny, bro. Anytime you pull like a bull head out of the water, they've got some shit to say. I always imagine they're angrily telling you to put them down, put them back in the water. But the idea that all of the bullhead are actually philosophers. Spit me some wisdom. Is a fire concept. I'm going to start listening to them from now on. Every time that I have cleaned my fish tank, whenever I put my fish back into it, the yellow one always tries to himself so i am going to document this because it is psycho every single time so okay you are taking a fish and directly taking it from one water which has completely different properties than the other water it has a different ph has a different hardness different alkalinity different chemical balances of every single chemical in it and he goes into it and he goes, oh shit, that's not what I'm used to. And he tries to get out. And you're saying, yep, psycho fish. If I took you and put you in a room full of, I don't know, air you had never breathed. It sounds a bit ridiculous when I put it that way. I don't know how to explain it. It makes more sense for a fish, though. Generally, the idea is just like acclimate the fish before taking them from one water body to another. Don't take a bowl of sink water and then throw a fish into a filtered aquarium. It's just not the same thing. And they're most likely like an instant reaction and try to swim out. We, uh, we have lampreys, so we keep lampreys sometimes. Uh, and we euthanize them in order to preserve the specimens to identify them in the lab because there are two species of lamprey here in New Jersey and telling the difference between like them by looking at them basically at a glance is not not possible for the most part so we take them home to identify them later in the lab and go through all that um, and that process is pretty much as simple as putting formaldehyde in with the fish the instant that they sense that there's something wrong they jump as high as they can you can pour one tiny tiny drip of formaldehyde in a bucket water full of lamprey and they will shoot out like five feet in the air it's ridiculous they they know they're paying attention so i am not surprised the fish tries to jump if you're taking it from a bowl of sink water to a sitting aquarium so they, they're, they're in here this is the clean tank this is their like holding so okay 
And okay. Oh, see. I don't know if you can see. Why is everyone so stressed about their fish dropping on the floor? You literally have your fish in a bowl that you probably make food in and you're moving it. At least this girl had an aquarium tank. <laughs> He's running away from the net, bro. I thought it was that he wasn't acclimating to the tank. He's running away from your net. He's not trying to off himself. He's trying to save himself. Survival instinct. Okay, I can't help but notice that all of the recommended videos are these guys punching things. Are they all the same thing? <laughs> it's just the intro to songs. Yeah, man, free the fish at the aquarium. Good job, man. Experiment of putting glass cleaner fish in ice, water, and the end. Okay, he's taking an albino pleco. He's going to freeze it in a mug. Fish, I would not be surprised. I mean, I'm going to assume the premise of the TikTok is it has a bunch of likes, is that the fish becomes unfrozen and can swim around again. Yeah, that happens. Fish are pretty, honestly, pretty tolerant of being frozen, other than, you know, warm water fish, which are not even tolerant of any bit of cold water. But there are a fair few wild fish in New Jersey that I think you could freeze into a block of ice, leave them there for a good while, and they'd come out fine. I'm pretty sure it happens naturally, and we don't notice like big lakes that freeze over. I'll bet multiple times a year a fish gets frozen in that ice layer towards the top and then thaws out when the lake thaws. Yeah, I wonder how long it takes. So now you've still got a frozen fish. I'm presuming maybe the fish won't wake up and the entire concept of the TikTok is that he just froze a fish to death. Or maybe it will wake up. Oh. Was that breath? Did he just try to give it CPR? Oh, the mouth moved. Yep, there he goes. He's still figuring it out. He hasn't quite figured out his buoyancy yet, but he's getting there. Frankenfish. Yeah, he probably died right after the video from not being able to swim properly. But hey, you know what? You successfully froze a fish and then brought it back back to life. Something that you can do with most fish. Congratulations. Hope it was worth the TikTok views. All right. Whoa.